Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we will be exploring the Weka data mining software. Um, so this is a quick start guide for healthcare providers to understand some basic tasks and concepts of machine learning. We will be using the Waikato environment for knowledge analysis, otherwise known as Weka. We will be using um, the uh, decision tree algorithm to do our analysis. And uh, we will be using uh, publicly available data, which we will download shortly. So to get started, um, I've downloaded the data set uh, that we use for this tutorial from uh, the Cancer and Genome Assembly. So um, I have it pulled up over in um, my browser. Uh, I'm sorry, this is called the Cancer Genome Atlas. So um, go to Launch Data Portal. And from there, you want to go to the Data Matrix. Because you don't want to download the entire data set, you want to just download a portion of it. Uh, I am a gastroenterology fellow, and so we want to go to uh, something I do know a little bit about, which is colon adenocarcinoma. Uh, we want to restrict our um, query to clinical data. Apply the filter. And uh, so this is the data that we have. Um, the data will actually come in uh, two folders, uh, Biotab and XML. And when you go to the Biotab uh, folder, uh, it contains a lot of uh, files, which are text files, um, which can be opened uh, with Microsoft Excel. They are uh, tab delimited um, uh, files. And so any kind of spreadsheet program will be able to open that. And make sure you have installed the Weka software on your computer. This is the link here. Um, so if you go to the Weka um, website, which I have pulled up on my browser, um, you can go to Weka software um, and you can choose the kind of um, software you would like to download based on the um, your computer's um, specifications. So after you've installed Weka um, and downloaded the, um, the, the data, um, you know, you can go uh, up and start opening the data and cleaning the, it up. <coughs> data cleaning um, for machine learning is a, a, very, uh, a very difficult thing to do, in my opinion, is actually one of the most uh, um, you know, time intensive task. So I've opened um, this file. It's actually all the patients who were diagnosed with colon cancer in the data set. And this is their clinical data. So I'm talking about age, race, um, you know, um, whether uh, the stage of the tumor, uh, what type of tumor histology they have, and so I've cleaned this data set up already uh, just to save some time. Um, but briefly, uh, to analyze this data, you want to um, remove um, anything that says non-applicable or um, uh, missing um, in the data, especially those that are uh, in um, numeric attributes such as the CEA level here or the number of lymph nodes that were counted um, because any kind of uh, text um, entry here uh, will cause the software to confuse the uh, attribute as being nominal. So let's go back to our PowerPoint. So after we have opened the data, uh, you would like to save the data as a uh, CSV. So comma separated uh, format. And the reason why I say that is because Weka can upload this uh, data format directly into the, um, into the software. So I will go to the Weka Explorer now. And so once you launch Weka, you will get this uh, small um, window. And uh, you know, I go always to the Explorer. Uh, because it's the simplest way to, to get introduced to the software. Um, 
as you can see, I've already ran the analysis. And so um, you can open the file using this. So open file, um, click machine learning, the, uh, you know, the name of your file. And you can actually choose a number of things. So the this is the attribute relation file format, ARFF. This is the default data set of Weka. Uh, but you can choose a lot of other things. Um, I typically like to use uh, CSV because um, it's compatible. It, it can be uh, opened and created by uh, commercial spreadsheet programs. So now, um, you know, you can see here in this uh, spreadsheet, there are a lot of attributes in this data set, but I've actually restricted my analysis to a few. So, um, and the way I remove those is basically just clicking on the attribute I don't like and clicking remove. Um, so these are the attributes I've actually chosen um, to analyze. Um, and so I just removed everything that I didn't want to be analyzed. Um, if you have a big data set, it has 200 variables. It will be difficult to just click every one um, in all of the attributes you want to take out. So what you can actually do is click all of them and then select the ones that you want to leave in and then click remove. OK, so um, I will unclick that. And so what we want to do is go and uh, do some classification. So the uh, uh, you, you want to go to the classify tab up here. Um, you can select the classifier here using the choose button. And so uh, the algorithm that we will be using is the J48 decision trees. So this is um, in the trees folder here, select J48. Um, once you click the algorithm here, um, you can actually select uh, the uh, parameters that you want uh, for the decision tree. So min num obj is essentially the number of leaves, uh, minimum number of leaves, uh, I'm sorry, minimum number of objects in each leaf. Um, this is the number seed. Um, this is um, a, uh, um, an option where you can either use an unpruned tree or a pruned tree. So I, I kind of leave a lot of this um, um, these parameters uh, unchanged with I, when I just do uh, exploratory analysis. So here uh, you want to click on um, the thing that you want to predict, which is in, in my case, I wanted to predict whether somebody had a BRAF mutation or not based on their history of other malignancy, their CEA pretreatment, vascular invasion, uh, microsatellite instability, uh, uh, whether they whether or not they had a KRAS mutation and a history of colonic polyps. So um, with a validation, I just want to briefly introduce this concept. So when we validate data, um, we can partition or use the data se uh, se uh, with several uh, several ways. So one thing we could do is use the entire data set for both testing and training. We could split the data uh, into a test portion and a learning portion, meaning the model will be created using the learning set and tested on the test set. Or alternatively, we can partition the data into um, 10 pieces, um, and each piece will um, be used as a uh, test piece, while nine, you know, the remaining 9 tenths of the data will be used as a training a set. So, you know, if I had a um, hundred samples, um, the part the data will be partitioned into ten subdivisions. That uh, the model will be created using ninety samples and then tested on the remaining ten, and the process is repeated over and over again until every uh, partition with ten uh, um, individuals each will be used as the uh, training uh, the testing set. So uh, going back to Weka here, um, I've actually ran the, the analysis now. So the, the, only, the only thing you have to do after you uh, have the validation options and you select here in this tab the, um, the attribute you want to predict, you select start. 
Um, and so in this case, we've actually have a prune tree that was created and it looks like there's only one root node, um, which is the microsatellite instability. Uh, it looks like if uh, this decision tree is basically stating that if you have microsatellite instability, then the chances of you having an abnormal BRAF would be um, higher than, than um, if, if you didn't have any microsatellite instability, then the more likely you don't have an abnormal BRAF. So um, let's just go through a couple of, um, so we've gone through the options um, and uh, Weka will gray out the classifiers that you cannot use based on the attribute that you want to predict. So um, in decision trees, just a brief uh, introduction to the concept. The way decision trees works is um, the algorithm will try to partition the data based on uh, the attribute you're trying to predict. And it's trying to uh, split the data set into the purest nodes possible. So for example, um, you have a um, 100 samples and it will uh, have several attributes. Uh, that the attribute that can split the data set into uh, the purest, meaning one, um, each portion has a homogeneous um, set of attributes, uh, then that will be the partition that it will select as the, as, as the, the nodes of the tree. So uh, some performance metrics that I want to discuss. So the precision is uh, also known as the sensitivity, which is defined as the number of correctly classified instances over the total in that class. Um, the recall is similar to the positive predictive value, uh, which is defined as the number of correctly classified instances over those that are classified uh, within that class. Uh, the receiver operating characteristic is a plot of the true positive rate which is the sensitivity versus the false positive rate. Now the ROC uh, is another metric that Weka uses, and these are just a, uh, some numbers to remember. So one would be a perfect prediction, 0.9 is an excellent prediction, um, 0.7 is mediocre, and 0.5 is a random prediction. So going back to the Weka software here, uh, if you want to visualize a tree, you can go right click on the model that you created, visualize tree, and here's our decision tree. Um, as you can see, the microsatellite instability appears to, uh, is the node that can um, separate the data set into the purest. Um, it looks like there are uh, uh, 28 samples of BRAF that were predicted, um, and uh, um, 24 of them were correctly classified, 85%, and versus four of them were incorrectly classified. Um, this is not a great model by any means. Um, I actually just um, randomly selected this, um, this data set and tried to uh, do a prediction um, just to illustrate this, um, how to use the Weka um, software. And so as you can see, um, the confusion matrix here, um, you can tell that the model does not predict abnormal very well. So there were uh, three abnormal, real uh, abnormal uh, BRAFs right here. However, the model, which is um, didn't classify any as being abnormal, whereas some uh, P, um, the, if the BRAF was uh, normal, then it looks like the the prediction was actually pretty good. So it, it actually predicted uh, twenty four correctly versus one incorrect. So um, um, I've just gone over the uh, number of correctly classified instances, incorrectly classified instances. The Kappa statistics is essentially how much the classification um, agrees with the, uh, the actual class. And so in this model, as you, you can probably predict, the Kappa statistic is very poor. It's point, um, point 0.6, it looks like. Um, so um, we've kind of gone over the confusion matrix and data visualization is one thing in Weka that is very interesting. And all you have to do is right click on the model and you'll get the, uh, the, the output in a, in a, in a di in, 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 with decision trees, you can actually see the tree. So this ends that um, um, brief tutorial on how to use Weka. 
um, there are a lot of um, um, ways to, to uh, learn Weka. You can actually go on YouTube and um, stream the videos that were actually created by the uh, <coughs> developers of the program. So that's it. Thanks for watching and hopefully um, you have a good day. Bye now.